heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the children of God said amen. amen. And amen again. It's good to be here this morning and good to see you, Reverend Roland, and all of the ministers of the gospel and our musicians and, and to the Brown family. As Cherie reminded me, we were all members of the award-winning Bowie State College University Gospel Choir. Amen. Back in the 80s, over 100 voices in that choir. And then today we still have our reunions where we all come back together again. As you can see, I put up my vocal cords in singing but they have not. And we thank God for their gift and their gift in ministry, preaching as well. And so we thank God for that gift. And to those of the Brown family that may be looking, oh, we thank you for Michelle, for bringing her along our way. And to all of those that are in here, let's get with the word of God as we as we preach what thus saith the Lord. And then we can all go out and get some leftovers from Christmas. And my wife is at home seeing our adult children off. I want to say seeing our children, but our adult children off. Our daughter left just before I came to church and... Uh, the baby boy is getting ready to leave when I was leaving and so I didn't expect Teresa would be with me this morning but I know she's out there looking in our virtual church and so we thank God for families families coming together in your hearing this morning it was read out of the gospel of Mark chapter 10 and I want to look at two verses in chapter 10 and it says in that 47th verse, it says, when he heard that it was Jesus, and I'm reading from the NIV, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then it goes in that verse 48, it says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But the Bible declares that he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. For these next few moments, I'm going to speak on the subject. We all have something to shout about in 2022. We all have something to shout about in 2022. Very briefly, with the help of the Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the praying of the saints. I want to reason with you on the thought that we all have something to shout about in 2022. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of 2021 and about to enter the threshold of 2022, it's important to understand that we all have something to shout about. Because when we reflect back on the days of our lives in 2024, let me say it the way the church said, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I realize that God has blessed me. We all had some good days as well as some bad days. We all had some ups and we had some downs. We all had our share of dangers, snares, and toils. But in the midst of all of that, God, have still been good to us. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Think that, that when I feel that, I, I, right now I feel that the claim is valid that we all have something to shout about in 2022. Because shouting 
Shouting is a great instrumental tool in giving God praise and that he truly deserves. And even the psalmist reveals in the 22nd Psalm that verse 3 says that God inhabits the praise of his people. For shouting suggests great victory as well as great praise. And if the Lord has done anything for you in 2021, you ought to give the Lord a shout. You ought to praise the Lord on this final Sunday in 2021. You ought to open your mouth and say thank you. You ought to tell him thank you. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you because in January 2021, I caught COVID. But in December 2021, I'm still here. Thank you. Is there anybody that got something to tell God? Thank you. You ought to raise your hand and give God praise for 2021. Mm. Now, now to fully appreciate this text that is read in your hearing, we, we must understand the context of which it is set. For, for I have learned as a man of the cloth and, and with some age and some experience on me that we have to understand that the past in order to appreciate our present. And that this is the part of the text that takes us during the, to takes us to, to Jesus. It was in Jesus' last days of his ministry. Jesus had been teaching on marriage and divorce. He blessed the little children. He counseled a rich young ruler and tells him to inherit eternal life, that he must set all of his possessions and follow him. He teaches the multitude about God with all things are possible. He, pre he predicts the third coming, the third time of his death and his resurrection. He teaches about the goodness in serving and as a journey from Galilee to to. to Jerusalem, the text informs us that he passes through Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho, the Bible says that he met a man who lived there by the name of Bonimaeus, the son of Tamias, who was blind and was set by the Jericho road with a tin cup of existing begging and Bonimaeus teaches us that and us all some valuable lessons as we enter into 2022 that the conditions that you encountered in 2021 does not mean that I will conclude that would be the conclusion in 2022 that we ought to not let the opportunity of a lifetime bypass us so the text reveals to us that when Bonimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to shout. And, and you see, my brothers and sisters, that Bonimaeus had heard how Jesus had turned water into wine at a wedding in Galilee. He had heard how Jesus took two sardines and, and, and some crackers and he fed 5,000 men and, and women and children. He had heard how the woman with the issue of blood had a pharmaceutical shot in the hem of Jesus' garment. How, he how she touched the hem and received a healing from him. Oh, my brothers and sisters, in verse 47 in the text, it says, When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, that he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Y'all y'all done missed it right there. Y'all done missed the shout. Notice what he said. Bartimaeus didn't wait till Jesus got there to shout. But he shouted before Jesus got to where he was. In other words, he got some of God about to praise him. He heard that Jesus was passing by. We heard that 2022 was coming. We ought to give God some praise because we know what God can do and what he will do. And since he heard, you do know that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can, can, can I borrow a skinny minute just for a minute and tell you what I'm talking about? Bonimaeus didn't need no preacher to preach him happy. <laughs> Bonimaeus didn't need no choir to sing him happy. He didn't need a deacon to pray him happy. He didn't need a choir to sing him happy. All he needed to know is that the living word of God was near. And the Bible says he began to shout, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. 
Well, not only didn't he, didn't he miss the opportunity to let a life uh, pass, time pass him and give God some, some about to praise, but the text also reveals to us that he didn't let the crowd keep him from giving, his, getting his praise on. In verse 48, it says that many, that many people rebuked him and told him, you ought to be quiet. But he shouted even the more. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. Even in this day and time uh, that we're living in, there's still some naysayers uh, who will try to hinder your praise. Uh, talking about it don't take all that. But I discovered in my walk with Christ, uh, I said I discovered in my walk with the Lord that it takes all of that and a little bit more. See, can I tell you, uh, I can tell you like this. Uh, I can't tell you your story and you can't tell my story like what the Lord has done for me. If the Lord has picked you up and turned you around, you can't tell your story like somebody else when he does it to them. You see, and you, you can't tell somebody else's story. You can only tell your story. I'm not going to let somebody hinder my praise. Well, not only did he not let the opportunity of a lifetime pass him and give God some praise and didn't let the crowd keep him from getting his praise on. But the text also reveals that he used what he had and what he had was a shout. He didn't have a press like the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. He didn't have four friends to bring him to Jesus like the paralyzed man in chapter 2. He used what he had and what he had was a shout and it was power in his shout because his shout was a shout of faith. Verse 49 says that when Jesus heard him, the Bible says that when Jesus heard his shout, that Jesus stopped right there in the road and he said, tell him to come right on here. When he shouted, Jesus heard him. Well, not only did he not let the opportunity bypass him, not only did he let God give God the praise and not let anybody stop him, not only did he not let the crowd hinder him, but the text says that he got rid of the text says he got rid of all the things that kept him from getting to Jesus. Verse 50 tells us that Bartimaeus yanked off his coat. He took off his coat. He flung the coat to the side. He jumped up and he came to Jesus. My brothers and sisters, in 2022, we need to follow Bartimaeus' lead and get rid of anything that's hindering us. Get rid of those things that are holding us back. Get rid of those things uh, that stop us from getting to where Jesus is. If it's your job, you've got to get rid of it. If it's those friends of yours, you've got to get rid of them. If it's material possessions, you've got to get rid of them. Ain't God all right? And if you can walk, if you can't walk, then you ought to crawl. If you can't crawl, you ought to scoot. If you can't scoot, you ought to find four friends and put them in your corner. Let them grab your cot and get you to where Jesus is. Ain't God all right? And the reason I know he's all right, because there was a time that when all of us were spiritually blind, on our way to a devil's hell, with no God on our side. But thanks be to God, who loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall never perish, but have every eternal life. I've got to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for making a way out of nowhere. And on this last Sunday in 2021, thank you, God, for making a way. Thank you, God, for make, getting me here. But as I enter into 2022, I don't have to wait because I know what he can do. And if he's done it for others, he so can do it for me. So 2022, you ought to get your shout on right now. Get that I'm getting my praise on right now, 2022. Because I know, I said I know what God can do. I know what God can do. 
He can lift you up. He can take you from out of nowhere and carry you to somewhere. I know what he can do. From a little child, I knew that it was someone. My mother used to tell me that God kept you alive for a reason. I had pneumonia at four years old. And my mother said, God kept you alive. She didn't know what for, but she knew it was God. And so 50 years later, 61 years old, and I thank God that I made it this far, but not by myself. I made it with the Lord on my side. Did he lift you up? Did he lift you up? Did he make a way out of no way? We all got something to shout about in 2022. On this last Sunday, on this last Sunday of 2021, as the Browns prepare to bring us a final selection, I want the Lord to walk by your side. I want him to keep you in perfect peace. If there's been something that's been holding you back, do like Bonamaeus, get rid of it, take it off. I know he's still in the miracle working business because on this past week, one of my members, Diane, her son had a high fever. But she called on the saints and the saints answered with prayer and about three o'clock in the morning i saw another text come by and the text says that his fever went down the text said i think he's gonna be all right that he woke up without a fever ain't the lord all right we can't take these little things for granted we've got to pray and when you pray without ceasing the lord will he will make a way. Diane, won't he make a way? He'll make a way somehow. Come on, Brown family. Come on, Brown family.
as we leave out of 2021 and when we shout as we go in 2022 as the song said that no weapon no weapon that is formed against you is not going to stop you the door of the church is open for those that want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior for those that are out there at our virtual church if you're interested in becoming a part of this fellowship either write your name on the line or send us a message through any of the vehicles that you are looking at us on and somebody will get in contact with you because we already know we're telling you that no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon there's no weapon that's out there that's formed that's gonna prosper the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ on this last Sunday of 2021 may he continue to cover us may he continue to bless us may we continue to follow him may we continue to shout and give him glory on this last Sunday. May he remind us of where we've been and where we're going. On this last Sunday, we want to say thank you because you have made it so by saying no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. And so we say thank you. On this day, this very moment, God, we say thank you. God, on this day, we say thank you for making a way out of nowhere. On this day, God, we say thank you because God, when, when some of us may have been homeless, you gave us shelter. We say thank you, God, right now in this moment, because God, if it had not been for you, 
we would have never made it. We would have never made it. And so, God, we say thank you. And now that love that you've given us in the past, that love that represents the present, may that love continue to be with us in 2022. We say thank you. Thank you just like Bartimaeus, we can say, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Lord, we love to hear you say, because of your faith, you are healed. 2022. Thank you. In Jesus' name, the children of God said amen, and amen, and amen. No weapon. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your week.